Now, what about our friend's suggestion? Our friend wanted us to use the plus operator in here. So let's click on edit this code. Let's keep these print statements for now. We must remember to delete them later. But let's do what our friend suggested. Our friend suggested that the new value of result is result plus i. Let's visualize this code. So again, when this code starts off, it looks the same. We call this function with the same list and we initialize the result to the empty list. We try the first value of i, which is actually not a prime, so this will not be added to our list just like before. We move on to the next value of i, which is a prime. Now notice that we have printed the original id of this list. This time it's a different number, but pay attention to this number as we proceed. Uh, we are trying to see if 2 is a prime. Of course, we know it is. So we know this will finally return true. It does. And now we do this new statement that our friend wanted. This statement on line 14. Result is result plus i. So result is currently the in, uh, empty list. To that empty list, we are concatenating a singleton list containing only i equal to 2. So again, we should get the list containing only two. Let's see if that's what happens. We click on next and indeed result changes to what we expect. Now let's see what happens when we print the ID of result. The old ID ended with 5968. When I click on next, observe that I get a different answer. Now this is crucial. When we write this statement on line 14, this is an assignment statement. How does it work? We evaluate the right hand side and we assign the variable result to that object. So this creates a brand new list object and sets the variable result to point to that new object. This is why we are seeing a different value here because we have created a brand new object on the right hand side. That object is created by concatenating the original list with this new list containing only i equal to 2. That new object has a different id and that's why we are seeing a different number here. So imagine now what would happen is as this list gets bigger and bigger, imagine it has a thousand elements in it. We found a thousand primes. Now we find another prime. Well, we have to make a brand new list. We have to copy all these thousand elements into the new list and then add one. You can see how wasteful, how slow, how inefficient this code would be. So our friend here did not make a good suggestion. It's much better to use the append version of this code. If you really want to use the plus operator, here is a way in which you could do it. And this is a little bit confusing. This version, if you try it, will work very similar to append. So as we have seen, just like i equals i plus 1 can be shortened to i plus equal to 1, similarly we can shorten our previous code to just result plus equal to square bracket i. This has the same effect as appending i to the um, uh, original list. You can click on visualize execution and rather than showing you step by step, I will simply cheat by clicking on last and we will see that these values don't change. The ids remain the same. So this is an important technical point. When we want to append an item to a list, we can use the append method. If we want to append several items, there is a variant called extend. And extend is a little bit like this. Here we are extending the list by only one item. If we wanted to put many items in here, this syntax plus equal to would be like extending it does not create a new object, it just simply expands the list to contain the new items in it. But a very common mistake that you will find in code written by others is 
instead of writing this code which is efficient, you will see people incorrectly or perhaps without knowing it writing code like this and this code is much slower, it is much more inefficient. So if you see code like this, you immediately have an opportunity to say, wait, I can improve this, I can make this code faster.